We're at the Double Love Experience Licensing Worship Service. I am Pastor Gabby Kudjo Wilkes. I want to say welcome. Welcome to each and every one of you. Those of you who are streaming, thank you for journeying with us. Thank you for being a part of this worship experience. Amen. Well, listen, y'all, we're going to go old school church today. Uh, our keyboard player is not here, uh, but we're going to start. Amen. Because there's, there's church to have. And we got, we got a drummer, we got a vocalist, we got enough to have some old school church. Where my old school church folks at? Where, you know, with your hand clapping and your toe tapping, you just, you just go forth for the word. So won't you stand for me? Won't you stand? Hallelujah. It'll make you feel warmer if you stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. We prayed for the physical audience. Now we're going to agree in prayer for the virtual audience who has come and joined us. And then, Brother Kyle, whatever you can do without the keyboard, we're going to do it together. Amen. Amen. Unless one of y'all in the sanctuary plays keys. Speak now if you ever hold your peace. Okay. Ian, Ian is the man, y'all. Ian, Ian, Ian went from sound to keyboard, and we give God praise. Um, all right, so we're going we gonna to let them figure that part out. Look, I just love the church. Don't you love the church? I love how people are so willing to serve. Okay, amen. All right, so they're going to do that. Uh, somebody in production, just uh, ask Malik where the cord is for that. I know it exists. I think, it's in the, I think it's in the closet. Amen. Let's pray for our virtual audience. And then Kyle's going to come, and the, and the praise and worship team is going to accompany them as they can. And then we're going to get these preachers up, y'all. Amen. That all right? Is that all right? I need to talk back, church. I ain't got a keyboard. Is that all right? All right. All right. Let's look to God in prayer. Good and gracious God, we thank you for being the source of every good and perfect gift. Among those gifts, God, you bless us with community, and we also thank you for blessing us with uh, three dynamic black women who are answering the call to a preaching gospel ministry. God, we give you thanks for that. We give you thanks for how your hand has already been on their lives, God, because before the foundation of the world, God, you set them apart and you called them for a particular work. And we are just here to bear witness and to celebrate uh, what you have already uh, sealed before we came onto the scene. So God, we come with hearts ready to worship. We come with minds ready to adore you, to exalt your name among God's people. Uh, these are our prayers, and we lift them up before you. In the name of Jesus, who is our Christ, let every heart say amen. Amen. And amen. 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 We're going to welcome now Brother Kyle to lead us in worship. Uh, you can take your seats or stand, whatever feels appropriate, but we're going to have some church together, all right? All right. All right. And amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, can we open our mouths and give the Lord a praise? Hallelujah. Come on, just shout, Lord, I praise you. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you. You're worthy. Lord, Hallelujah. 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 Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Come on, put those hands on it. Hey, Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Come on, everybody say, Lord, you are good. Come on, put those in. Say, Lord, you are good. Say, Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Oh, people from every nation, people from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation. Say, we worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah, 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 we worship you for who you are. Oh, say we worship you, we worship you. Hallelujah, 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 we worship you for who you are. Say and you are good, you are good. Put those hands on it. Hey, you are good, you are good. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are. Come on, say, Lord, you are good. Say, Lord, you are good. And your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good. Say, Lord, you are good. And your mercy endureth forever. Say, Lord, you are good. Say, 
Lord, you are good and your mercy endure forever. We give you all of the glory, Lord. Mercy endure forever. Come on, say, people from every nation, people from every nation and tongue. From generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. Oh, we worship, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you. For who you are, say it, and you are good, you are good. Put those hands on it, yeah. say it, and you are good, you are good. Hey, yes you are, yes you are, yes you are. Come on, one more time from the top. Lord, you are good, say it. Lord, you are good and Lord, you are good and your mercy endure with forever. Hey, say, Lord, you are good, say, Lord, you are good and your mercy endure with forever. Lord, Lord, you are good and your mercy endure with forever. Say, people from every nation, people from every nation and tongue. From generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you for who you are. Oh, we worship, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you. For who you are, hey, say you are good, you are good. Put those hands on it, yeah. Hey, say, say you are good, all good. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are. Hey, and you are good all the time, and all the time, you are good, you are good. All the time and all the time you are say you are good all the time and all the time you are good you are good all the time and all the time you are good say you are good all the time and all the time you are good I give you the glory Say you are good all the time, all the time. You are good. Say you are, you are, you are, you are, you are all the time. You are good. Say you are good all the time. You're the time. You are good. People from every nation, people from every nation and tongue. From generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. Oh, for who you are. Oh, for who you are. Oh, for who you are. Who you are, hey, say, and you are good, you are good. Now, somebody lift up the name of Jesus if you know that he's good. Come on, somebody shout unto the Lord, you are good. Come on, somebody say, you are good all the time. He's good, 
Hallelujah. We give him all of the glory. We give him all of the honor because he's been so good. Hallelujah. 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 God is able to do just what he said he would do. Yeah. Said he's going to fulfill every promise to you. Oh, don't give up on God because he won't give up on you because he's able. Come on, anybody believe that today? Yeah. Say he's able. He's, he's able. able. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on, everybody, lift it up. Say, God is able. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill. He's going to fulfill every promise. Come on, lift it up. Say, don't give up on God. Oh, he won't give up. Because he's able. He's able. He's able to do just what he said he would. He's going to fulfill. Come on, say every promise. Don't give up on God. Yeah. Hey, said he's able. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He gives. We give you the prize. One more time, God. God is able to do just what He said He would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise. Hey. Say, don't give up on God.
to just sing that don't give up on God again. Come on. Lead us, Kyle. Lead us, Kyle. I just want to hear the voices. We're about to introduce these preachers and I want them to hear some don't sweet give up sounds on God. before don't they preach. Give up on God. Come on, Zion. Cause he won't give up You're ministering to them right now as they say yes to their call. Don't give up on God. You ought to stretch your hands this cause way. He won't give up Regardless on of what you. life throws at them. Don't give up. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. Keep singing, Don't keep give singing, up on God. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, lift it up. Y'all sound good. Ooh, keep it going, keep it going. Don't, don't give up. Don't give up. When the power gets up, don't give up. When the keyboard player don't show up, oh, don't give up. When the church door is closed, don't, don't give up. up. When your sermon ain't finished, don't give up. Whatever obstacle, give don't give up. up. Ooh, don't, don't give up on God. Yeah. Cause he won't give up. Can we get that good double church clap right here? Come on, where my church folks? Don't balls? give up on God. Cause he won't. Come on, put some DLE swag on oh, it now. Come on, now is the don't give up on cause like he won't, cause he won't, don't give up on God, Hallelujah cause he right won't, here. cause he won't give up on you, Hallelujah. cause he's able. Cause our God is able. Come on and put your hands together and give God praise. Amen. Well, y'all, we have come to the point in our worship experience where those who will be later licensed will be preaching what we call in the black church their trial sermon. Now let me explain to you about the trial sermons in the black church. It really don't matter how many times you preach before, on the day you get licensed, we call that thing your trial sermon. So they about to preach their trial sermons, amen, uh, before they are licensed. And we are so excited about the women of God who God has given uh, to the gospel ministry, amen, because ministry is bigger than just this house, uh, but it is across the globe. So when they are licensed today, they are licensed to do ministry. They're licensed to say wherever they are given the opportunity, amen, hallelujah. And so we do want to make one announcement. Uh, we had a group of four. Uh, we are a group of three today, amen. One of our individuals who was in that cohort, she will be going forth at another time. Uh, she's got some things going on that she wants to wait a little bit. But we love us some Trelawney Joiner, amen. We love us some Trelawney Joiner. And I talked to her just a couple of days ago, and she is here in mind, body, and spirit with her cohort. Um, and so we will have three women today um, as opposed to four. Amen. Amen. So we want to take a moment to introduce these three dynamic women, and then they are going to come in their own way. Um, and so the order that they will come in is Brittany Pascal, and then Athea. Oh, oh, hold on. Let me do it again. I'm sorry. Brittany Pascal, 
Because I heard a I know that's right. And I know long enough to know. You got to let a I know that's right live. You got you to gotta give it space to breathe, you know. Uh-huh. So I heard a I know that's right. I know what that means. Afia Sylvester, who you got to love black church, came to preach but saw there was a need and picked up a mic. Thank you, Afia. Hallelujah. And Evelyn Jean Francois. Amen. Amen. Um, permit us the privilege to just speak a little bit about these women before they come because they're so special to us. Um, I'm going to speak a little bit and then Pastor Andrew's going to speak a little bit. Then they're going to preach a little bit. We're not preaching today. But um, very special to us. I'm going to go in the order that they served. Um, I also want to speak the name of Luke Ellard Severe. <laughs> Hallelujah. For those who don't know, he was our inaugural ministerial fellow. And Afia will tell, tell you, she was the second fellow, and he never let her forget that he was the inaugural fellow. Uh, he went home to be with the Lord in November, uh, but he was peacock proud of these women. Um, and, so, and so I want to go in the order that they served, right? So, so the first fellow that we had after Luke uh, was Afia Sylvester, amen. Y'all call her Fee. Y'all call her Fee. You might call her Igneo. I don't know how you know her. You might call her other things. Uh, she first came to us, y'all, as our vocal director during our preview year. Amen. And I remember we were talking to our uh, then minister of music, George Oswald Chambers. And um, he said to us, he said, you know, I have someone. <laughs> this is what he said to me. Y'all, those who know me, this is going to be funny to you. He said, I noticed you had to do a lot of work before you preached. <laughs> this is what he said to me. <laughs> and he said, he said, I feel like I have someone where you won't have to do all of that. And I said, okay, you know, I, 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 that would be wonderful. <laughs> he said, you know, I think I feel like I have someone, and, you know, I just, I just want to put you all in contact. We went and had dinner with Afia. Turns out we had crossed paths many, many times before in different times of ministry and just hadn't had the chance to get to know one another directly. And so she came on and she served as uh, our vocal director. And my Lord, like the anointing fell every time the mic was in her hand. The anointing fell before the mic was in her hand, really. It just, it just fell. It just fell because her presence was there. Um, but she, she uh, led us as the vocal director for the first year of our, of our, our preview year and into this space. Of our first service, she was the vocal director and was through the end of that year. And then I want to say at the top of 2021, I believe it was 2021, um, she came to us. She said, you know, I'm feeling a shift. I'm feeling a shift in my call. Um, I'm, she said, I'm not leaving Double Love. I remember because I was excited. I was like, okay, she's not leaving. She said, I'm not leaving Double Love. We had another, we had another dinner. She said, I'm not leaving Double Love, but I feel a shift. I feel a shift. I said, okay, you know, let God do what God is going to do. Um, and then not too long after that, it was time for us to look for the next ministerial fellow. And as God would have it, it aligned with this season of Afia's life. And so she applied to be our fellow, and she was wonderful in the fellowship. And she was, y'all, the, the, really the first fellow within the pandemic. So, so Luke was already in it before the pandemic had begun. But Afia was the first one to say, I'm going to start this while we're still in a pandemic. While we're still virtual only, um, and it was just powerful to see her serve, and so and so here we are. Fast forward to today, um, just such an honor to have her here. Um, and then I'm gonna let Pastor Andrew speak about uh, Brittany Pascal, and then I'm gonna speak about Evelyn, and then we're gonna get y'all up to preach. Amen, amen. Yeah, y'all, our hearts are just bursting with joy, with pride. It is a good thing, is it not, uh, to see. Uh, during Women's Her Story Month, three black women Say giving it. their yes to God. We can put our hands together and give God praise for that. And while we're giving God praise, uh, I underscore and italicize everything Pastor Gabby said about uh, Afia. And want to say a few words about um, Brittany Pascal, yeah. who comes to us as uh, my Lord, as a uh, an organizer without peer who comes as a theologian that interprets scripture so clearly, so carefully, uh, with an eye towards inclusion and towards uh, advancing the liberating love-powered ministry of Jesus the Christ. We are so Love grateful that, that um, during the fellowship uh, that you led us through organizing trainings and through an economic justice form. Y'all, she had us jam board. And we, we, we just gave God praise for Zoom. But Brittany had us doing little post-its online. Has anybody ever done that before? 
Brittany had us doing that kind of work. So we're, we're grateful for the level of anointing, uh, intelligence, uh, and preaching power that you bring to the ministry. We cannot wait for you to preach your trial sermon. All of y'all to preach your trial sermons. And then I'm going to let Pastor Gavin. Absolutely. Just home. one last thing about Brittany. She was our first, she and Trelawney were our first completely virtual fellows. So Brittany's based in Nashville, Tennessee. And Trelawney's based in Atlanta, Georgia. And they did their fellowship completely virtual. They only came to Double Up one time to preach their sending sermon. And you would not have been able to tell the difference. Right, Double Up? Like, we, we felt so, so, they, they sold so deeply um, of their time and their talent, even though uh, they were not geographically based in the air. Um, and then this woman on the far left, who technically... <laughs> Technically, until 5 o'clock p.m. is our current ministerial fellow. <laughs> until 5 o'clock p.m. Um, we, we love us some Evelyn Jean-Francois. We love them all. Uh, but what was so powerful is that Evelyn came to us by recommendation of our mutual friend, Reverend Barbara Laverin, who will be blessing us later on today. And um, I guess the theme, Barbara was like, you need some help with social media. <laughs> I have someone. That's, I guess it's just a theme, um, which is funny because we were praying for help with organizing economic justice, and the Lord was like, I have someone with Brittany and Trelawney, so God knows what you need when you need it. Amen. Um, but Evelyn, she began with us last summer um, to, uh, to really step in into that digital uh, it wasn't digital pastoral care at the time because we weren't talking about your call. It was just, it was just digital coverage, right? Um, and then, you know, yet again, it was time for us to open up the fellowship uh, application process. And Evelyn applied. And I thought that was so dope because, you know, a lot of times when people get familiar, they don't actually also do the formal things. Okay. I know I don't have a keyboard to, like, amp y'all up, but <laughs> come on, church. <laughs> You know when folks really know you, they be like, I'm going to text you my information. I'm a, just don't forget about me, Pastor Gabby, when everybody else applies. And, oh, I should also note, for each of them, there were multiple applicants. Amen. They were selected. Um, they were not the only ones who applied. They were the right people for the job. Amen. That's important to say. But, but so Evelyn applied. Evelyn applied, like, right when the, when the application opened. And I was like, okay, amen, right? And she has been a blessing. And so um, just the ways in which God has used her. And I want to speak um, a word of gratitude to her because she was the fellow on assignment when our church went through our first period of deep bereavement. Deep bereavement. She happened to preach her first sermon the day that Luke Severe passed away. And the way that Evelyn held space as she was still learning how to be a minister herself, uh, we know that God has great things in store for her. Amen. So those are non-traditional introductions, but we thought y'all might want to know what they've been up to in here because we know you know them. Uh, but we want you to know how God has been using them. Amen. And so, uh, uh, where's Brother Kyle? Kyle, Kyle, where you? At? Okay, Kyle, can we get just like one verse of some sort of sermonic selection, and then uh, Brittany, you can come, and then as soon as Brittany goes down, you all will follow in your respective order. Amen. In the name of Jesus. The precious name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, the mighty name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Oh, oh, oh tell who can stand be for us when we call on that great name? His name is Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. We have victory it's in the name of Jesus the mighty name of Jesus we have the victory oh in the name of Jesus
Jesus, the precious name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand be stand before us? Oh, when we call on that great name, it's Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, we have the victory. We have the victory. Oh, we have the victory. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. I felt my call to ministry in a church where women could cook and give money. So they said, in word or deed. And yet, even in places where fear attempts to silence us, there is love. And so, I stand here today in the love of many, including many of those at the 40th Avenue Church of Christ. Raised by my baby boomer parents who were black educators in the South, I had no problem speaking up and out. I knew my memory verses and my Bible bowl, gospel books, and my pageant speeches for youth conferences. And at that time, I was just a girl who turned into a woman that was expected to be quiet, to be seen and not heard. And I am thankful today that even in that quietly, I heard the quiet voice of God. And God's spirit has spoke to me even in those places. Especially today, a moment I never imagined my licensure to gospel ministry. I would also like to express my most heartfelt gratitude to Pastor Gabby and Pastor Andrew, to my first teacher, my shopping partner, and love actualized mama, to my first coach, the principal of being principled, my father, and my friend, daddy. Words are not enough at this moment. Thank you. I love you, and I am because of you. To my Aunt Gilda, my Uncle Darwin, who are watching via Zoom, to my forefathers and foremothers, and especially my grandparents who have all crossed the river, Samuel Aiken Tolbert, Sarah Elizabeth Jamama Red Tolbert, the woman who taught me to be excellent at loving, my chauffeur and my stern corrector. May you sweetly rest in rising glory to Doris Jean Paschal, to Reverend Dr. Julius A. Paschal, the first man I saw invite a woman in his pulpit, my steady hand, to the host of my dearest friends and comrades gathered to my right, your, my left, your right, and virtually, to the first man who told me I couldn't be a preacher, and to the first man who had me in a pulpit, to the first man who asked me to play, pray aloud, to the first woman preacher and my friend Claire and to my All Saints Church family. To my Sunday school, vacation Bible school teachers and my Bible boat coach who gave me a love for scripture and a voice in a place where I was silenced. To my teachers, formal and informal, counselors and all those who got it, supported and affirmed me as an awkward little black girl. To the places and schools that shaped me to the land on which I was born and the land on which I stand now. To my body for holding me up through stress and trauma and infirmity 
and to my doctors, caregivers, and my therapists. <laughs> to my beat, beat, beating heart. To Mother God, comforting spirit, and liberating Brother Jesus. For all these things, I offer the most deepest gratitude, thanks, and praise. And now to the word found in Luke 3. And the new, I'm sorry, in Luke 8, verses 1 through 3. And the new revised standard version reads as follows. Soon afterwards, he went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. The 12 were with him, as well as some women, who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. And Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Chusa, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their resources. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? God, thank you for this preaching moment. Be with your people and your preacher. May the words of my heart, words of my mouth and meditations of my heart, be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. God, you are my strength and you have been my redeemer. Ancestors, be honored. God, be praised. Amen. And I say. Let us reflect together for the next few moments on the topic of a few good women. She is a friend of my mind. She gather me, man. The pieces I am, she gather them and give them back to me in all the right order. It's good, you know, when you got a woman who is a friend of your mind. <laughs> See, this quote is from Beloved. It's, it's from a character by the name of Sixo. He's referring to a woman who lives on a neighboring plantation, one that he walks 30 miles to see. And perhaps Toni Morrison, in her most unflinchingly portrayal of the aftermath and horrors. Beloved was released in 1987, and now it's at the center of conversations on banned books. While Beloved is perhaps Toni Morrison's most acclaimed novel, you see it won a Pulitzer Prize in 1988 for fiction. The work chronicles the life of a black woman from her pre-Civil War days as an enslaved person in Kentucky to her time in Cincinnati, Ohio. And although Setha lives as a free woman, she is held prisoner by memories of her trauma as an enslaved woman. She's the protagonist, the main character, and she's proud and she's strong and she's spirited, like the women we meet in today's text. She has encountered or struggled with great infirmity. And see, from Toni Morrison's Beloved to the Child Light's lyrical composition of repetition of a good woman gone, oh, I see her face everywhere I go, on the street and even at the picture show, have you seen her? <laughs> Tell me, have you seen her? We learn that the few good women are always recognizable. And according to the writer of today's text, Jesus, too, knew the significance of a few good women. This is apparent through the gospel as he interacts with women, honors women, and in many ways counteracts the patriarchal culture of the day. Be clear, Jesus came by way of a woman, was called into ministry by this same woman, also known as his mama, was accompanied by women in his ministry. The women stayed when the men couldn't handle it when he died, and a woman told the story of his resurrection. So I'm not here today to question, prove, or debate sermonically what the role of women is in the life of Jesus. Instead, I am here today to take a close-up look of a few good women. Much of Luke 8 is a rerun of sorts of the Gospels that we see in, Ma in Matthew and in Mark. These Gospels give narrative of the work and the person of Jesus, his miracles, his mission. And of the synoptic Gospels, Luke tells the most stories of the women. And many of us are very familiar with this text, but the latter verses of this text, known in Christian communities as the parable of the sower. So, 
I want to focus us for just a few moments on the preface, the first three verses that I've read into your hearing that are ironically or not often glance over the verses about the women. We enter today's text on the heels of an interaction between, between Jesus and a woman, an adulterous woman, commonly known as. And then the writer almost teases us with the mention of certain women present in Jesus' life or ministry. Nevertheless, the names are there, and the names of a few good women are spoken. Mary, called Magdalene, Joanna, Shusa, Susanna, and many others. You see, the writer choosing to speak these names, write these names alone, should call us collectively to speak the names of women. But what else might we learn from these three verses? If it's all right with y'all, I'm going to go in reverse, reverse, beginning in verse 3 and work our way back. From verse 3 and the latter part of verse 2, we learn that the women mentioned in this text had both names and purpose in the ministry of Jesus. That is to say that the women made up the very ethos of the work of Jesus. Ethos is a Greek word meaning the character, and it's used to describe the makeup of a community, the guiding beliefs of a nation or ideology. They were not only there, though. They also had purpose. Similar to the woman that six so from Beloved Visits, who gathers his pieces and hands them back to him. Now, my literary and theological imaginations know that Sixo is speaking simply about black women do, doing what black women be doing. <laughs> yeah, back in the text, one translation says that they ministered unto him of their substance, which some biblical scholars have attributed to mean they funded and provided essential, keyword essential support. The women ministered to the minister himself, Jesus. Once again, these women, who would have been women of color, doing what women do. So how dare we question the ministry works of women's years? How dare we question the ministry works of women years later? We also learned that there are a few good women named, but many others, which should point us to the sense of the collective. A few good women are named, but there were many, and they had both names and purpose. Now to verse 2. Verse 2 begins with the meaning of the text, really the, the naming of women. But more than that, it establishes that the women present in Jesus' ministry had real stories, stories of both affliction and transformation. You see, these women had been through some things physically and emotionally and psychologically, trauma, similar to what we see in Beloved. Verse 2 says that one of these women had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. And yes, this verse speaks to the power of Jesus in one's life to heal and restore from all forms of oppression. But if we are not careful, we miss something else in this saying. The mention of these infirmities is a call for us to redefine what we see as a good woman. We need to decentralize the notion that a good woman, a woman worthy of freedom or liberation and love looks like a supermodel and has a spotless reputation and has access to resources and talks like you talk and goes to school where you go to school and says what you want to hear when you want to hear it and gives you a yes when they mean a no. We are good because we are. And as so, we deserve the absolute best. You see, Jesus saw these women for who they had been and who they were and called these women not despite of that, but because of who they were, what they had seen and what they had survived. They were not secondary, as some commentators have alluded. They were not behind or to the side, but the writer says, as well, as well. You see, I teach English, and I'm always telling my students about transition words and the importance of precise language as well. <laughs> so what does Jesus' radical inclusion of women and non-men mean for us today? 
I can't answer that question in this short period of time, but I know it should mean that we say no more to the ways of the world where black women are dying <laughs> in healthcare systems and black, black girls are getting kicked out of preschool where a black woman beauty queen can jump off a building moments after an Instagram post and people react with check in on your strong friends. This means that you've got to be able to see black women as complex beings and care for them and include them radically. You got to see it and you got to show up. And finally, from verse one, we are reminded that Jesus' primary focus is good news. <laughs> primary focus is good news. And it is good news today that a few good women were with that Jesus to proclaim a countercultural narrative, even in a patriarchal society. We can learn from that that if our primary focus is this good news, that we don't have room to exclude and marginalize folks, including and especially black women and black girls and queer folks and immigrants. <laughs> it's good news and it's a charge for men and non-women to resist the ways of the white cis hetero patriarchy and to come along the few good women already in the work. And today I'm thankful I said, I'm thankful today for the good news of a few good women. Anybody know you are here today because of a few good women in your own life? Anybody grateful to a God that gives us a few good women? That women had and have names and purposes in the ministry of Jesus in the gospel. That Jesus saw women and saw their stories and called it valuable that the work of Jesus is always focused on good news. Anybody in here grateful for a few good women, for the good news that there were women there and that there are women now in pulpits and schools and lunch lines and courtrooms, there were a few good women in NASA. They called them hidden figures. And a few good women that sat down and a few good women that marched and a few good women that walked Thank you, God, for a few good women. Thank you for the good news that in the kingdom of God, there's a place for all people with the margins in the center. That what the world says a good woman is is not what a good woman is in the kingdom of God. And how amazing is it that this Jesus decided to spread this news with a few good women. And perhaps the best good news, what my kids would call the gooder news. <laughs> Today is that there are a few good women here at 336 South 5th Street, just after 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to formally accept the call to ministry and the 12 were with him, as well as some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. And there was Mary called Magdalene from whom seven demons had gone out. <laughs> And Joanna, the wife of Herod Stewart, Chusa, and Susanna, and many others, and Brittany, and Althea, and Evelyn, a few good women. There have always been a few good women. And there will always be a few good women. Thank you, God, for a few good women. Hallelujah. Keep going. Praise the Lord for a few good women. That's not all you have. Give them a little bit more for the few good women. The ones that Brittany itemized for us and the ones that are in your life. The ones who are the reason that you are here today. Keep praising the Lord your God for a few good women. I said keep praising the Lord your God. Let God know that you don't take it for granted. That there are a few good women. And we are not sacrificing the men. We honor you. But this right now is about the women. And so we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for the few good women. Ooh, we praise God. 
Hi, everybody. <laughs> My name is Afia Sylvester. Some call me Fee. And um, I want to start off, and I'm, I'm emotional today, right? Because this is not just monumental in our lives, but it's monumental in the kingdom. It is God asserting that I am still working. I'm still moving. I'm still licensing. I am still seeing. And I'm still equipping for the body of Christ. And so bear with me. I want to start off by saying thank you. And I want to start off by saying thank you to my pastors. I'm not going to look at you because I'm going to cry. But so I'm going to look at y'all. Um, and so just the fact that they see something in you and their choice and them answering and heeding the call that the Lord has put on them to steward, they decide to pour. And they continue to pour and push and say, Lord, I see it. What shall I do to steward these people? And for that, I'm eternally grateful. I have to thank, and I'm going to call them by name, everyone who pushed their way. I got some babies and some adults, and I'm going to start with the babies for Aria Best. And I don't know if I don't see them all, but okay, 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 with their mom. Melissa Best, Isaiah Best, Nala Best, for my Aunt Jalisa, my Uncle Terry, for my Auntie Carrie Ann, for my wonderful, wonderful friend, Lorraine, for my incredible, I'm not going to give her a title, I'm going to just call her my incredible Brittany. <laughs> Palmer, <laughs> and forgive me if I'm, I'm trying to scout, right, because I don't want to get in trouble. For Ian, the one who came and he served so selflessly, and that is a brother that I could not have prayed for. I didn't know the words to pray to be able to have that brother, but I thank God for him. And last but certainly not least for my mama. She's small, y'all. She's real tiny. Don't let me fool you. She, she's about here, here high, right, and real slim, but she alone is a few good women. And I'm, I wasn't an easy child. I was a good child, but I wasn't an easy child. And I'm still not an easy child. But I praise the Lord, my God, for a praying, interceding, prophesying woman. For everybody who has contributed to this, this journey of mine. For those who are my loved ones and family, both biological and found, who were unable to make it here today, I am grateful to you. For the lineage of clergy that came before me on both sides of my family, I am grateful to you. And last but certainly not least, I put, I put this last because this is my foundation, so I like it to be right there and give it a little bit extra. And that's to the Lord my God. The God on whom I stand, I breathe, I live, I move, my have, I have my being. And the God for whom I exist. I thank you, Lord. So I am going to jump on in. And I want you just to repeat after me. Somebody say, pursuing the press. <laughs> One more time, pursuing the press. So with that, I'm going to take you to the scripture and turn with me to Philippians 3, 13 through 14. The word says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do. Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord is already blessed, and we thank you, God, for your word. Heavenly Father, Lord, even as we come to you in prayer, we honor you. We send to you, and we say thank you for this day. Thank you for this time. And Holy Spirit, preach this thing in each and every one of us. As Lord God, we need to hear it, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. So we find ourselves at an interesting moment in time. We live through a pandemic, check. We live through social unrest that in some ways mimic the 1960s and all the other evolutions of social injustice being revolted against, check. We've lived through chaos and uncertainty, and it just felt like every time you turn on the television, it's something else. Check. And yet and still, we found ourselves in so much loss and sorrow, but so much joy and bliss all at the same time, things just happening. Check. But many of us now, as we're on the heels of what feels like moving forward, still trying to struggle to catch our breath and figure out our way. 
right when we thought it was okay to go outside and things were getting back to normal as they told us, there's so much going on. From food insecurity to housing uncertainty to wars that no one predicted yet everybody predicted. To inflation where trying to get some food for your family might actually put you bankrupt. To recessions and all these things that have us feeling like, well, what are we going to do? What is the anchor on which I could hold? Folks are struggling to figure out the way forward and we're asking ourselves, what's next? We're desperately searching for a centering purpose and an anchor. And today I would like to propose to you, people of God, that now is the perfect time as we find ourselves at a crossroads to really buckle down in the radical pursuit of God's plan. This is a time to press, to pursue the press toward the prize of God. Look at your neighbor in their eyes, and don't worry, you got your masks on, all right? And I want you to tell that person, and I want you to conjure up in your soul, really access the Holy Spirit and speak into them. Say, now is the time to pursue the press. Turn to somebody else and one more time say, now is the time to pursue the press. Hallelujah. So I sat with this, and the Lord gave me the title. I'm like, okay, God, so what are we going to say, right? What, what are the points? What are the bullet points? I'm very linear in my thinking. And the Lord just challenged me. He said, hey, I don't want it to be this step by step. I want you to sit with these things that I put in your heart. So I said, okay, Father. I sat with the Lord and said, well, how does one go about pursuing the press? We've heard this sermon time and time again, but how do we go about doing the thing? I sought the Lord for an answer, and the Lord gave me two pillars. The first is surrender to the process. Surrendering to the process looks like releasing our desire for control, releasing our need to understand every aspect of the process. The I trust you God, but if I could just see a little bit more into the future, I got some of this right. I understand some of what it looks like, but not all of it. Can you give me a little bit more? Surrendering to the process looks like letting go of that school of thought. And this surrender looks like giving of yourself fully to God's design. Even in uncertainty, and even when it hurts and when it gets uncomfortable, even when it seems counterintuitive in your very mind, your logical thinking is saying, this don't make sense. This ain't quite it. This can't be what I heard. This can't be what the Lord is doing. Surrendering to the process means giving that surrender, even when those things are bubbling up inside of you. What if we were so radical in our surrender that we considered releasing our expectations of what should be? of the way that our lives should look by this time, right? The way that things should have turned out or the things that should have gone differently. What if we were so committed to our surrender in this process that we release the stories, that we release the things that we tell ourselves about ourselves and about the world around us? What if we released the hurts? We say we forgive, but we're still holding on to something or a little something. And yeah, you know, I have no art against anybody, but I just don't trust people. I just keep to myself. What if we were so surrendered that we would release those limitations? What if we said, I understand systemic injustice and I won't invalidate that, but I also believe in the power of my God and I want to find space where I'm not going to allow that to be the sole limitation on me. What if I would surrender? would allow us to release ourselves by the grace of God of the things that have held us captive in our past. And what if we focused on the pursuit of God's design? Pressing towards the Lord. Pressing towards purpose. Pressing towards divine promise. Pressing towards hope. Towards joy. Towards love, truth, peace, favor, and grace. That is what the surrender could hold on the other side. So what if we did that? Surrendering to the process challenges us to commit our resources, our intelligence, our time, our energy, all of us, toward the pursuit of the press. Trusting in that pursuit that we will find everything we need from God on this journey in time. In our pursuit of the press toward the high calling, we are challenged with surrendering to the process. With surrendering to God's plan, to God's work while trusting the God of this journey. Someone just go ahead and say one more time, surrender to the process. 
And the second point that the Lord gave, as I was sitting there mind blown like, wow, so you mean we have to give all of ourselves to this thing, right? And challenge the parts of us that we don't want to challenge and do the work as they say, right? And then the Lord said, the second part of this is also to commit to the journey. Someone say commit to the journey. The second pillar of pursuing the press is the resolution within yourself to say, I'm committing to the journey. And I just want someone to just yell it out, even if you don't feel it right now. Go ahead and yell out, I am committing to the journey. Because the reality is that part of this process is the commitment to taking action and navigating the ups and the downs, navigating the twists and the turns that await us on this journey. The reality is, is that there will be times where we feel unqualified. Where we feel uncertain, where we're afraid, where we're discouraged. But the question is, will we commit? Will we commit? Because there will be highs and beautiful moments of intimacy with God. Don't get me wrong. This is not a doom and gloom thing. It's not, woe is me. I'm just carrying this cross. Oh, God. No, there will be beauty in this journey. Absolute beauty, bliss that we could never fathom because the God who is exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask or think is in charge of this, right? But there will also be times where we are challenged and stretched. And in those times, commitment to the journey looks like trusting God and pursuing the press regardless of the season of the journey that you find yourself in. Whether you are in the high or the low. Whether you found yourself abounding or abased like Paul, whether you feel like you are the least of the families and the least of your family, you are the least of them. What does that mean? Whether you feel like, hey, we don't come from a lineage of excellence, right? We don't know, but you know what? Even more than that, I feel like I'm not necessarily excellent. I don't always feel strong. I don't always feel this, that, and the other like Gideon, but the Lord says, I have a call on your life, and I don't care what you feel like. I want you to know who you are in accordance with my word. Even when we feel unprepared, imagine being the speaker with a stutter who is called to speak to a pharaoh like Moses. When we feel like only a shepherd boy who somehow was called to be a king, you are used to being among sheep and leading sheep, and you are called to be a king. Even when you find yourself in that radical opposition, you are the one who has the choice by the grace of God to commit to the journey. And committing to the journey means that at the mountaintop and in the valley, we cry out, yes, Lord. We cry out, I will pursue. I will press toward the mark. I will go. I will go. Even when they don't understand it, I will go. Even when I don't understand it, I will go. When you call, I will answer. When you say my name, I will say, here am I. Committing to the journey means mustering up the courage, the resilience, the tenacity, the commitment to the phrase, here here am I, Lord, send me. Allowing God to reveal the hows and whys and the mysteries of this journey in his time. It looks like assuming the posture of Mary when faced with the possibly overwhelming task of surrendering her womb, her body, her pride, her worthiness. Her, her cleanness, her righteousness, her notions of being enough to say, I'm going to carry the Savior of the world. And I'm not going to stand and, and cower under the voices that tell me I was wrong for this or who don't understand. Surrendering and committing, assuming that posture of Mary means saying, like she said, be it unto me, Lord, as you desire. And our scripture let us know that although we are not yet perfect and we haven't arrived and we are still very much a work in progress, sometimes we are step in step with God, we're on point, we feel anointed, and sometimes the process is going a bit slower than we think it ought to be going. But we are on the journey nonetheless. We are on our way, seeking desperately the will of God. We are pursuing the press, regardless of the noise, regardless of how we may feel, regardless of what we do and do not have. We are saying, Lord, here am I, surrendered to the journey. 
committed to the process. Hear my Lord, send me. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. Bless this word. Bless this church. And may we all have a special grace to pursue the press. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon. I greet you in the name of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. <laughs> I am humbled to stand before you. My name is Evelyn Jean-Francois. I'm from Flatbush, Brooklyn. <laughs> I am, as of 5 o'clock, I am DLE's Ministerial Fellow for the fall 2021-2022. Again, I am humbled to stand before you today. I'm humbled to be before our virtual audience. I'm so happy for everybody tuned in. I would love to give God thanks in this moment. <sighs> the God who knew this day would come before I even was thought of in my mother's womb. Lord, I thank you, God. I want to give a shout out. I know I could, I could probably greet everybody, but I'm from Flatbush. So shout out to my family. <laughs> Shout out to my praying mother, my mother who, who, she checks on me like, I haven't heard you praying today. How are you today? I thank you, mommy, for everything, mommy. I thank you, daddy, who I know as the deacon Jean-Francois. I love you, daddy. I lift up my sister, who I'm half of, because, you know, older siblings always raise the younger siblings. I lift up my sister. I love you, sis. I lift up to you, her children, nieces, my nieces and my nephew, Madison, Maya, and David Barnes McCullough. You guys remind me that there is a generation following me. You guys have seen me grow as I've seen you grow, and I love you guys. I want to lift up the name of Reverend Lorraine Gregoire, who has gone on to glory, who gave me, who she named me. She gave the name Evelyn to my mother, and she obeyed, and my name is now Evelyn, and maybe she rubbed a little clergy on me too, because I ain't know this was going to be in the cards. But I do lift up the name of Reverend Lorraine Gregoire. I love to see my best friend, Shaina Galat, who went in the sixth grade said, you should come to church with me. And she brought me to Peniel Church. L'Eglise Peniel, man, Peniel Church is where I've met my beautiful circle of sisters. My sisters in Christ, y'all have seen me. <laughs> y'all have the footages, y'all remember me. And I love you so much. Thank you for being here. Brother Rad, y'all think I harmonize. Brother Rad, uh, bro, you are my brother, and I'm, I love you so much. Who, Barbara, Reverend Barbara Laverin. I met you, uh, Reverend Barbara, oh my goodness. I met you at Peniel, and the moment I told you that I think, I think I received the call, you, you, got, you picked up the phone, you called Pastor Gabby. Pastor Gabby and Pastor Andrew, the leaders of this church, Thank you. Thank you for embracing me on day one. It was like my first day visiting. They gave me a mic. I was like, okay, this is excellent. Thank you for your guidance and your leadership. You, are, you both are awesome, awesome, awesome. Whew. And those are, my, those are my greetings and introductions. I stand here before you today. I would love for you to join me in listening. My sermon, my trial sermon is called Call and Response. Don't get me hype. <laughs> Please turn to your Bibles or tune into the word of the Lord. I will be reading from Exodus chapter 3, verse 4, and it reads, when, when the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush, Moses, Moses, Evelyn, Evelyn. Afia, Afia, Brittany, Brittany, here I am, Moses replied. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, here we are. Holy Spirit, we need you, oh God. We need you to help us receive your word. Thank you for what you have prepared. Thank you for this journey. Have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. People of God, 
There's some things in life that just come easy to us. It's like muscle memory to us. When we hear it, we know exactly what to say. When I say, hey, you say, hey. you say, ho, right? <laughs> when I say God is good, the church says, and depending on who you are and what your journey looks like, when I say to the window, you re- my people, to the wall, to the wall. These are my people. I know I'm in the right place. See, these call and responses come naturally to us. I know Pastor Andrew is laughing. <laughs> to the window, to the wall, I'm just saying. No, these call and responses, they come naturally to us because it's a matter of shared experience and repetition. We know all of the ways we can respond to all different types of calls, but we really never talk about when the call comes from God and the response is supposed to come from you. Thank God I have it written down. I'm going to say it again. We all know the ways that we can respond to certain calls, but we really never talk about what to do when the call comes from God and the response is supposed to come from you. Y'all gassing me. When when each of us in this sanctuary hear the call from God, will we all have the same answer? What is the response that we have? How do we react? What is going on when the almighty God calls you and calls you by name? You see, because our ears are sensitive. There are so many things calling us all the time. Somebody here in the sanctuary has an eggs benedict and a chicken and waffles calling them by name right now. There's a brunch somewhere calling them. And, you know, when you need to understand whether or not this is a call from God, let's look to the scripture. Point number one, we have to start by taking a closer look. We have to take a closer look because here in the scripture, Moses is taking a closer look at a burning bush that is on fire but not has yet been consumed. He was taking a closer look at the wonder of God. The wonder of God is astounding. And it will have you taking a closer look like, is this really happening? The wonder of God will have you curious about how God can be father and son and spirit. The wonder of God can have you curious to know how he can be word and flesh. The wonder of God can have you curious to know how he can be both bread and water. How God can be the way, the truth, and the life. You see, when I received my call, I was taking a closer look at God because of the wonder that he was working in me. I was curious to know how I had come this far. So if you're curious to look for your call, take a closer look at the wonder of the work that God is working in you. Start by taking a closer look. Because like I said, the wonder of God is astounding and it's unfamiliar to our finite minds. So to have an experience with God, you must understand that you are entering into what is not ordinary. When you are called by God, listen to confirmation. In our scripture, in our one verse in chapter, Exodus chapter 3, verse 4, God calls out to Moses twice. And I feel like, God, could God have called him twice to make sure that Moses knew he wasn't imagining this? Because when you're called by God, chances are it's not the first time you heard a little something, something. It's not the first time you heard a silent, a, a, a soft voice in your ear. And I'm here to tell you, when you hear it for the first time, you're not bugging. You're not going crazy. When I received my call, I thought I was out of my mind. (laughs) When I heard what I heard, I said, what? Holy Spirit said, yeah. I said, am I bugging? Holy Spirit said, no. (laughs) And what I understood was that I'm not out of my mind. I'm actually in my faith. And it startled me. And when I, I think when God calls Moses' name twice, it's Moses' response that let God know that he could use Mo. So point number one, point number one, start by taking a closer look. Point number two, you're not going crazy. Point number three, you are here. You are here. My daddy clapping, y'all. My daddy clapping. When God called Moses, Moses Moses. What I love about Moses is that he didn't respond, yes, burning bush, or hello, 
or, or who's there. Like, that's my least favorite thing in the movies when there's danger. And they're like, is anyone there? Like, you are somewhere you need to leave. But Moses knew that he was here. His answer was, here I am. Does, did Moses realize what he was really answering to? When Moses received his call, when I received my call, Moses had made, he had made a comfortable life for himself, away from who he truly was. He was detached from a past that he knew he could not undo. When Moses answered, here I am, he was saying more than that. He was saying, here I am, as I am, like I am, how I am. I'm here. If you've ever been lost and you find a map, the most comforting words you can see on that map is you are here. Because once you find it, you put your finger on it. And what was once strange and peculiar is all of a sudden not so unfamiliar. And because you may not yet know how you're going to get unlost, but you know where you're headed because you know where you are. Moses knew that he was here. Some might understand that to hear a call from God warrants a yes or no response. But in reality, the response is, here I am. Or I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. I'm not yet ready for what you are calling me to be. But it's okay. Because God is patient with you. God has been patient with me. <laughs> And whatever your answer is, wherever you are, whether you're here or not there yet, understand that God is working a wonder in your life, and God is calling you to something. See, the thing about calls, right? Technology makes it so easy to turn away from calls, right? You can put your phone on buzz where you can feel a call, but you don't, you don't hear a call. And then there's do not disturb where someone can call you, but nothing brings it to your attention to answer, right? And then you can turn your, your phone completely off where you don't receive calls at all. And depending on where you are spiritually, you might think I'm still talking about phones. But nevertheless, when you take a closer look at the wonder of God and the work that he is doing in your life, when you hear that call, Moses, Evelyn, Afia, Brittany, what will your response be? I can't answer that question for you. I can't call, I can't make a call, and I can't expect you to respond to me. But please understand that there's an entire new life connected to the call of God on your life. Whether you're here for it, if you're not there yet, God is ready for a response from you. And my response is here I am, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, if you were ministered to by those sermons. I know, I know that you were ministered to like we were. Y'all can do better than that. Can y'all make these ministers feel loved? Can you let them know the word went forth and it did not go forth and return void? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all, we are so honored. The state president of our conference, the state president of the New York Progressive National Baptist Convention slid on in here, Reverend Dr. Robert Linden and his beautiful wife, Sister Linden. Thank you all for being here so, so much. Dr. Linda, we're going to need you to usher, offer a prayer when the certificates come. That all right? Okay, amen. All right, amen. And that's my president, so I got to ask. I got to ask. Get permission first, but I had to do it on the mic because, you know, amen. Uh, can y'all help us celebrate Mo? Look, Mo, yo, we called, we, we texted Mo after service started. <laughs> and the brother came in and filled in because our other keyboard player for today had an emergency. This is the church. I'm playing, but I'm serious. I'm about to cry. Because the church is this. The church is y'all showing up for these three. The church is Brittany getting on a plane, not by herself, but with her parents. Where the Pascals? Can y'all wave at us? Where the Pascals at? There they go, there they go. All the way from Nashville. 
Matter of fact, all the parents, would all the parents of our licentiates please stand? Come on, Miss Yvonne. Come on, Francoise. Come on, Pascals. Come, oh, come on. on. Y'all can do better than that. Come on, put your hands together. Give honor where honor is due. They loaned them to us, but they raised them, and they prayed over them, and they poured into them. And we thank God for them. But y'all, this is the church. Churches show some love, making sure we're going to have cake and sparkling cider. Can y'all celebrate our hospitality team? Yeah. This is the church. This is the church production for getting in where they fit in. I mean, I don't know how they made all these miracles happen, but can you celebrate production? This is the church. Taz running from something else to get here because he knew there was an emergency. This is the church. I'm going to keep saying it till y'all get it. This is what you're walking into, ladies. The Lord provides. God provides. Where there is lack, God says not so. Where there is lack, God says go forth. When you decide. Oh, it's the church. This is the church. Folks like Ian say, I'll set up the sound. This is the church. Come on. When you walked in here, the heat wasn't on, and, and the heat came on. This is the church. And Devontae and Kyle said, I'll sing without a keyboard player. Where are the people who are grateful? You don't have to call my name, but I'll serve. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Because, cause, y'all, we planned this service real well and in advance. But the enemy was just trying to make some things not go forth. But these preachers stood flat-footed, not an organ, not a keyboard, not a choir, not a sermonic selection. So I know they are ready. If you can go forth like this, eyes have not seen it. Ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the mouths of men and women what God will do for you. Your parents are here. Your pastors are here. Your president is here. Eyes have not seen. Go forth anyhow. Go forth anyhow. Preach the gospel in season. And out of season, send me, Lord, I'll go. A few good women showed up. Call and response, the tradition of the black church. If God said it, I believe it. And that's enough. Come on, if it's enough for you. Woo! I'm trying to move on. But if it's enough for you, I'll preach whether the people are here or not. I'll preach whether the band backs me or not. I'll sing whether I praise him. Hallelujah. Anyhow. Anyhow. Look at somebody tell them anyhow. Anyhow. Whatever the conditions. Anyhow, I'll go because you called me. I'll preach because you called me. I'll serve because you called me. On the computer, I'll go virtually. In person, is there anybody here? Hallelujah. Give the Lord some praise right here. Give the Lord some praise right here. Give the Lord. Come on, a good God deserves a good praise right here. I feel a shout right here. I feel 30 seconds right here. To, to God be the glory. You ready? To God. Oh, uh -huh. 
glory uh -huh. to God be the glory. Oh, I feel like church in here to God. To God be the glory. For all the things. For all the things he's done. For all the things he's done. For all the things he's done. Daily he adds. For all the things to the church. He's done. To God, right here to God. To God be the worship through your giving. Amen. Then we're going to give these, these ministers their official license. We're going to have some prayer, some cake and punch, and we're going to celebrate what God has done. Amen. Amen. Uh, we are a church that gives virtually, but we also have a basket. Tyler, come on up, please. Tyler has a basket. We're not going to we don't. We're not going to march. We don't march. We're not a march. We don't have space to march. We're just not a marching church. <laughs> we just keep it 100. But we do have baskets. And so, uh, Tyler, you can pass those around on either side. Yeah, just, just start there. Let it make its way. And for those of you who give virtually, which is most of our folks, you can give via Cash App at DLE Give. D-L-E Give. Give a thoughtful gift if you can. Hallelujah. The ministry is going forth. The ministry takes some resource. Cash out DLE Give. PayPal DLE Give. Zell Double Love Experience at gmail.com. Cash app DLE Give. PayPal DLE Give. Zell Double Love Experience dot com. At Double Love Experience at gmail.com. Excuse me. Amen. And then, of course, if you're writing a check, make it payable to Double Love Experience Church. Amen. We're going to ask these incredible women of God to come on up here so they can receive their licenses. Amen. If you are waiting for the cue to get your camera out, this is the thing you want to go ahead and post and tag them. This is, this is the moment. And then, Dr. Linden, if you would join us, please. Amen. While they're coming, we're just going to pray over this offering. Hey Amen. This is truly the Lord's doing, is it not? And it is marvelous in our eyes. Our hearts are filled after hearing three powerful, profound sermons. Let's look to God now in prayer over this offering. God, we thank you because we stand here at all because of your generosity. God, we are grateful that not only are you the source of every good and perfect gift, but God, we are grateful that you've given us opportunity in worship to entrust back unto you a portion of what you have so graciously entrusted to our care. Use these gifts, God, for the furthering of your work of salvation, for the advancement of your love, your justice, your liberating work in the earth. God, there is a creation groaning, and there is a God who is yet calling up preachers 
into the holistic, hands-on work of gospel ministry, including and starting with their preaching power. Bless them now and bless these gifts given in offering. In Christ's name we pray. Let the church say amen. Amen. And amen. 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 Um, Reverend Dr. Kelly Farrell and Chelsea Smith, I think they're in the back. Oh, they, they on the other side. Amen. Uh, they are bringing our guests. Come on, come on, y'all. Come on, Los Angeles. Stand right here in between Dr. Linden and Pastor Andrew right here. That's good. Thank you, Rev. It's one of our ministers, y'all. She's phenomenal. Reverend Dr. Kelly Farrell. Amen. 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 And so we are going to do this this way. Uh, let's, we're going to start at the end and come down. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, presented to Evelyn Jean-Francois. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. This is the point where y'all record. Oh, y'all recording. Y'all good. Y'all quick studies. Y'all quick studies. Who? Okay. Uh, next, Brittany Pascal. Hallelujah. And Afia Sylvester. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Andrew, would you read the inscription? And then, Dr. Lindy, we're going to ask you to pray over these women. Amen. Would you read the inscription, please? Absolutely. I'll read the inscription from uh, Minister of Field Sylvester's uh, Certificate of Ministerial License. And it reads the same for all of them. So uh, this is representative. Uh, it says, this is to certify uh, that Afia Sylvester, uh, also read here, Brittany Pascal, also read here, Evelyn Jean Francois, amen, who has given evidence that God has called this disciple into the gospel ministry and was licensed to preach the gospel of Jesus the Christ at any given opportunity and to exercise these gifts in the work of the ministry. Can we put our hands together and give God some praise? And then just before the signatures, there's some power right there because it says given by the Double Love Experience Church, that's us, an affiliate of the Progressive National Baptist Convention. Y'all looking at some Baptist preaching women. And for those who know, that's a shout right there. 334 South 5th Street, Brooklyn, New York, 11211, March 13, 2022, signed Reverend Gabby Kudjo Wilkes and Reverend Andrew Wilkes. Would you give God praise for Minister of Fear, for the first time, Minister of Fear Sylvester, Minister Brittany Pascal, Minister Evelyn John Francois. Get your pictures. Come on, go up right here. Get some energy right here. Get hype right here. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Amen. We hear now from our president, Reverend Dr. Robert Linden. Thank you to uh, my friends, uh, Pastor Andrew, Pastor Gabby. We salute you all today uh, for the great work you are doing here at the Double Up Experience uh, Church. It was December the 17th, 1986, 35 years ago, that I stood in your shoes. And I remember it like it was yesterday, and I share in your joy on today. Will you bow your heads in a word of prayer? Now, Father God, we thank you that you're still calling uh, women to preach your gospel. We thank you, God, for their response uh, to the call to preach the gospel. And God, we pray today uh, that you will be with them throughout their ministry. We pray, God, that you would make them women of prayer, uh, women who study the word of God, Women who are not afraid to stand up and to tell the world that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. So God, we come today praying that you would touch their, their lives. And God, we pray, God, that you would bless their ministry. God, we pray, God, that uh, you would bless them to submit to the leadership of this church of Pastor Andrew 
and Pastor Gabby. But most of all, God, we pray, God, that they will submit to your lordship today. God, that they will submit to, to your will, that they will submit to your direction. And God, we believe on today, God, that these three, they're going to do great things for you. God, these three, God, they're, they're going to stand tall for you. These three, God, they're, they're going to shine bright, God, that they're women of faith, God, that they will stand and preach with boldness and with clarity and with passion the word of their God. We thank you, God. Thank you for their families, God. Thank you for their lives. And God, we seek you to bless them, God, and, and lift them up to a higher level. We thank you for this great occasion. We thank you, God, that we can witness uh, what you have done. We thank you, God, that we can witness your calling. And it's marvelous in our eyes. So, God, lift them and keep them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands. Celebrate what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Ladies, y'all go to the side. Don't go too far. We got pictures to take. Uh, Dr. Farrow, will you give us our benediction, please? Amen. And then show some love. Has some cake over here. Make sure Brianna gets a picture of the cake. Come on, black folks. Don't cut the cake before we have a picture of the cake. Y'all know how we do. And don't take somebody's name or nothing on it. You know how we do. But we have some refreshments here. And then we have our regular 5 o'clock service uh, coming. But you don't have to rush. Uh, just know that that is coming in at 5 o'clock. There's a preacher in the house, the Reverend Barbara Laverin. Amen, somebody. She will be bringing the word at 5 o'clock p.m. as we culminate Evelyn Jean Francois' fellowship. Amen, somebody. It's a good day in the house of the Lord. Come on, Dr. Farrell. If all hearts and minds are clear, Lord God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the awesomeness of your presence and all that you have brought to us. Lord God, we honor you for the joy and the, and the trial and tribulation and the goodness. Now, to the one who is able to keep us from stumbling, the only wise God be glory and majesty and dominion forever and ever. And all God's people say, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Help yourself to some refreshments.